Welcome back. Let's jump straight in to have a look at different file types. Open Windows Explorer and navigate to the Documents folder. I've got a few folders in here. Let's jump into the My Random Files folder. In here, I've just got a few different random file types. First, we have an audio file and a compressed file. I'll come back to these in a minute. Then we have an Excel spreadsheet identified by the green icon. You'll notice that it looks very similar to the icon you find on the start menu to run Excel. The same for the next file, a PowerPoint file with an icon almost the same as you'd find on the start menu. And a Microsoft Word document. Again, we can tell it's a Microsoft Word document because of the icon. You'll notice it looks just like the Word icon that we've used in the last few videos. Remember, double-clicking the file opens that file in the associated program. In this case, Microsoft Word. So, we can tell the file type by the icon that it is displayed. The Word icon for Word files, the Excel icon for a spreadsheet, and the PowerPoint icon for a presentation. Just below the Word document, we have one that looks almost the same. There's only a very slight difference in the icon. This is a rich text file, and it is very similar to a Word document, but doesn't quite allow the same level of formatting, so it won't let you insert tables and that sort of thing. If I double click this, it will open the file in Microsoft Word. Next one down is a text file. If I double click this, it opens in Notepad. So this gives you an idea of what the file is and what program will be used to open that file. Look at the next one. The name kind of gives away what type of file it is, but double click picture and it loads a program so that you can view the picture. At the bottom is a video file. Double clicking this will open or play the video in a program called Film and TV. The same program is used to open the audio file at the top of the list. Let's have a look at the compressed file. A compressed file is a way of shrinking one or more files so that they take up less space on your computer. It's an excellent way of archiving or backing up files. When we compress files, we often say we zip files up, as these compressed files are called zip files. To view the contents of a zip file, just double click on it. Windows Explorer will show you the contents of the file as though it was displaying the contents of a subfolder. Now you can double click on any of these files to open them. You'll notice a bit of a delay as the files are opened, as Windows needs to decompress the file before it can show you the contents. Remember, the folder structure is like the branches of a tree. At the moment, we are at the very end of a branch, and we want to move up or back one level. To do this, in the top left, there are a few arrows. The arrow pointing to the left will take you to the last location you were looking at. In our case, this will move us up one level to my random files, as that was the location of the zip file that we double clicked on. But if we had been switching between, say, the documents folder and a USB drive, then the left arrow would switch me back with the right arrow taking me back again. They are basically back and forward buttons. The up arrow is the one that we want. This will move us up one level in the tree. Look in the address bar as you click the arrow and you'll see that we're up one level and now we are back in the My Random Files folder. Across the top we have some items that open different ribbons. Let's take a look at the View ribbon. So just click View at the top. The Layout section allows us to change how the files are displayed in the main window. At the moment we are on Details view. This gives you a list and includes some extra columns giving you some further information, such as the file type and the file size. Small icons gives you a multi-column view, but we lose the extra columns. Note the size of the icons, as this will be the main thing that changes between the views. So if we switch to large icons, we have more of a row view, and of course the icons are larger. Notice in this view the icon for the picture has changed. Here it's giving us a preview of the picture. The same happens for video files. I like this view if I'm trying to look through many pictures, I can quickly find the one I'm looking for rather than just relying on the name. 
The list view is almost identical to smaller icons, but we only have one column. Medium icons and extra large icons give exactly the same row view as large icons, but of course, the icon sizes vary. If I'm searching through for a picture or video, I'll use large icons. Otherwise, I normally stick to the details view, as it gives me more information. As I mentioned, it gives me the file type, so I'm not just relying on the icon. And it tells me the file size, which to be fair, I don't need that often, but it's there if I need it. The other reason to stick with the details view is that you can click on any of the column headings to sort the view by that column. Just click it again to reverse a sort order. By default, this view will be sorted alphabetically by file name. Any subfolders will be first with files listed below. Imagine that I'm looking for a file. I can't quite remember what it's called, but I do remember it was a Word file. If I click the type column, I now have all the Microsoft Word files grouped together so I can look through and hopefully recognize the name when I saw it. Remember that we can tell what program will open the file based on its icon. Click the left mouse button while the mouse pointer is over a file to select the file. Then press the right mouse button to open a menu. From the menu that comes up, select the bottom option, Properties. I'll just move this up so we can see it without zooming out. Now we can see quite a bit of information about the file. We can see its type, in this case an MP3 file, that's an audio file, and we can see that it opens this with a program called Groove Music. To change this, click the Change button. Now I can select what program I want to open this file type. I don't have much choice here. If you have more programs installed that can handle this type of file, then you may have different options listed. If you can't see the one that you want to use, assuming that you've already installed it, click More Apps. Once you have clicked once on the program you want to use, click OK. Once I do this, you should notice a change in the icon to reflect the change in the program used to open the file. Other information that we have available in the Properties page includes the location and size of the file. We have some dates including date the file was created and last modified. And at the bottom, we have some more advanced options that I won't go into during this course. Let's take a look at the properties for another file. I'll select the picture, click the left mouse button on it to select it, then click the right mouse button to open the menu. And at the bottom, I will select Properties. Just as before, we can see the type of file is a JPG. That's pronounced JPEG, which is a type of picture and is opened with a program called Photos. We can see its location in Documents folder and then the My Random Files subfolder. And we can see a size. You'll notice there is a size and a size on disk. Don't worry too much about this. Files will always take up a little more space. We can see the created, modified and access date and we have the more advanced options at the bottom again. Looking back at the top, we can see a few tabs. At the moment, we're on General. The Security tab allows you to set permissions for the file, so you can specify who can access and modify the file. The options relate either to users of this computer or on your local network. The Details tab just gives you some more detailed information about the file. The type of information available here will depend on the file type. And the Previous Versions tab is again a little beyond the scope of this course. Basically, you can set Windows to automatically keep backup copies of files, and these previous backup versions of the files can be managed from this tab. Let's have a recap of those common file types that we have looked at. First, we have a couple of documents that have very slightly different Word logos. The first is a normal Word file, but the second is called a Rich Text Format file, or RTF. This has some of the same formatting options as the full Word file. I can do some page layout stuff or insert pictures or tables, but I don't have many of the advanced features I can use in native Word documents. You may be asking why you would create an RTF file rather than a normal Word document. Well, this comes down to compatibility. 
What if I want to send this document to someone that doesn't have Word? They wouldn't be able to open a Word file, but Windows comes with a limited document editing program called WordPad. This can be used to open and edit RTF files. Lastly, we have a basic text file. This won't contain any advanced formatting such as bullet points, images and tables, but it will normally be opened using Notepad. Here are a couple of other Microsoft Office files. First is a presentation file, normally consisting of a number of slides. This opens in PowerPoint. And second, we have a spreadsheet which opens in Microsoft Excel. The next category we have is PDF files, which stands for Portable Document Format. The idea behind these is that you can create a document with as much formatting as you want. You can then save the file as a PDF and send it to anyone. The software to open and view PDFs is available free to everyone, so whoever you send the file to can open the document and see the exact formatting that you have selected. Here I have two PDF files, but they have different icons. This just shows that different programs can be used to open the same type of file. In this case, the first icon is the icon for a program called Adobe Acrobat Reader and the second will load the PDF in Microsoft's Edge browser. You're very unlikely to see these two icons next to each other, like this, as once you set a program to open a particular file type, all the icons for those types of files will change to reflect which program is used. You can't set two different programs to open the same file type. Remember, compressed files are often called zipped files. So when you see the zipper on a file, you know it contains one or more compressed files. I'll cover compression in a couple of lessons time. At the moment, you just need to be able to identify them. Nice and easy when they put a zipper on it like this. Now we have some media files. At the top, we have the same image files. Remember from the walkthrough that the icon will depend on the view that you have selected. So if you have the details view, for example, you will see the icon on the right. But if you have large icons or extra large icons selected, you get the preview of the image as the icon. At the bottom, we have a video and audio file. These are the ones that can look quite different as there are lots of options for which program can be used to open them. The one type of file that I haven't mentioned yet is the program for themselves. If you are just dealing with working files such as Word or Excel documents, you won't see this too often, but you may come across it if you either look through some of the folders on your computer or if you download a program from the internet. Here we have a standard icon for a program within Windows. I should say that this is often customised by the company that supplies the software though. It's actually quite unusual to find an icon that looks like this. So the icon for Microsoft Word, for example, will be the Word logo. In this video, we have looked at different file types and identified common file types. We have explored the properties of a file, including the date created, date modified, and the file type, as well as changing the program that is used to open a particular file type. I showed you how to change the layout or view in Windows Explorer. So you can either see large icons or, using the details view, you can see more information such as the type and size of a file. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.